Food. It is one of the four basic needs that must be met for any organism to survive. Eating is one of few rituals that bond us as humans and define cultures around the world. Food production or gathering is the crux of civilization. But do we know what we are eating? Genetically modified foods are foods that have had their genetic makeup altered by scientists who combine genes from different organisms to produce some desired trait in the final product. For example, bacteria genes are inserted into corn to make them insecticide resistant. In 1973, the first engineered organism was produced in a lab. By 1983, the first genetically modified plant was produced. Two years later, test plots were planted. In 1993, the FDA turned their back on genetically modified foods. One year later, the first genetically engineered tomato appeared on kitchen tables. By 1996, more genetically modified foods hit the markets. Now the question is not which foods contain genetically modified ingredients, but which ones do not. Based on empirical observation, we value economic savings over the quality of food. Economies of scale have allowed these multinational corporations to dominate and monopolize our food supply. Some resist, but with resistance comes a monetary cost, and some cannot bear that cost. No single statute and no single federal agency govern the regulation of agricultural biotechnology products. The regulation of genetically modified organisms falls under the FDA, EPA, and USDA. None have decided to label genetically modified foods in the states, and no long-term studies on the health effects of genetically modified foods have been conducted. However, advocates of GMOs feel that mass distribution of genetically modified foods to impoverished countries could help alleviate starvation. Is the public participating in the genetically modified food debate? Do we care what's going into our bodies? Is getting the most bang for our buck more important than the quality of the food that we buy? Are the unknown health risks worth the gamble of mass distributing genetically modified foods? I worked growing the food, and I think the growing the food should come first and the business knowledge should come second. And you don't grow the food in according to the dictates of business, you do the business according to the dictates of growing the food. Uh, so we're not really interested in growing, you know, one type of tomato or, or a monoculture of one type of crop. Uh, you can't live off of just one type of tomato and, you know, we'd end up growing a, a non-healthy system if we did. So. Genetically modified organisms just don't interest us because they don't seem to help uh, any of the people that we're trying to reach. We have grown uh, exponentially. We've, we've had steady sales growth within the last uh, few years. We've had really remarkable sales growth. This is a food consciousness group, and they're only dealing with farming as a sort of, well, that's how we get our food, and we need to support these small farmers. In other major natural food store chains, you can go in and still get artificial ingredients, you can still get genetically modified foods, you can still get high fructose corn syrup, you can still get trans fats. You will not find that anywhere in the store, not in the produce, not in the shampoo, it's just not here. And that is really, really different. I mean, that's where Earth Fair is like blazing the path. In conclusion, the genetically modified food debate is something that some people are taking notice of and participating in. However, this issue has gone largely unnoticed by the general public as a whole. This issue could be one that jumpstarts the rise of the declining public sphere. The responsibility lies with the people to know and to understand the facts behind genetically modified foods and to actively participate in this ongoing debate.